Hey everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right video. Today we're going to get into how to deal with pest problems and I'm going to give you some all natural ways to deal with them as well as recommend some organic methods uh, that you may want to use and I'm going to explain the cost benefits of using all of them. So I'm over here at my parents house where I did my beginning gardener skills series which if you haven't seen that uh, check out the video here or the links down in the description. Um, but one issue we did have out here was with earwigs. We had hundreds and hundreds and we still do have some and they actually ate down all of our beet and our carrot seedlings and we lost them. Uh, the radishes still did well. Um, the, the main squash here almost got completely taken out and I'm going to give you some strategies on how to deal with earwigs, uh, slugs and snails. You can kind of use the same techniques for all of them. And I'm also going to give you some techniques for, you know, a little bit more difficult insects such as aphids or cucumber beetles or anything out there. Before we get into that, I really want to talk about a subject that's very important, which is biodiversity and the balance that can be achieved through having different types of plants in your garden. Certain pests, they will always go for the plants that are weakest, they're stressed out, they're having some sort of issue, or it's a plant that they specifically really like or doesn't put out some sort of uh, defensive toxin that they don't like. So all of that's something to keep in mind when you're trying to analyze why a pest is going for that specific crop. Now as far as defensive measures with biodiversity and planting a lot of different types of plants in your garden and surrounding the area, so I'm talking shrubs, trees, flowers, herbs, annuals, perennials, everything that you could possibly have, the more habitat that there is for life, the more species that will be able to live there, which means more pests and predators, which is going to create this uh, a more balanced relationship in your yard so that when pests come in, let's just say aphids for example, guess what? Ladybugs are going to find that because the ladybugs and their larvae love to eat aphids. So what ends up happening is that once the food source arrives for the predators, the predators will come in and the pest won't overtake everything. There'll be more of this balance going on. And I think there's a great example in our garden here because like I said, only the carrots and the beets got taken out. The tomatoes, the squash, the radishes, uh, the pepper, they all made it. That is just a great example of how, you know, having multiple types of plants in your garden bed uh, will guarantee that you get something. Now, let's move on to mitigation and how to deal with pests. So like I said, we had a really bad problem with earwigs and the way to get rid of them is to have them fall into a trap. Now, what we made are oil traps and that's basically just a tuna can uh, with the cheapest oil I could find at Costco, uh, which was canola oil. And you just pour that in there and uh, put the tuna can in at surface level and then uh, that way when they're walking around they just fall in there, they drown and they die. Uh, and then from there you're going to cut their population down in size so that the damage that they do, yes they will do some but it, not enough to kill or, or damage the plant enough that it dies. And that's what we're trying to go for um, when dealing with pests naturally. So it might be difficult to see but there are hundreds of earwigs in there that have fallen in there and drowned. Here's an example of one where not as many fell in there, but still effective. And you can see what we did here. We just put them all around the plants. Another trick for earwigs is to get a bunch of rolled up newspaper and get it wet. Come out in the morning. Oh, you see all them running away? There they are. So then what you'll do is you'll come in the morning and then take them out and then dump them into a bucket of water and then you can drown them in that. So that's another way to get rid of your earwigs. My mom also tried this little box technique um, but that didn't work too well. The newspaper method worked the best and actually in the beginning we didn't know what was eating our pests and I came out at nighttime to check and all the earwigs were all over the radishes here and that's how we figured out that it was actually earwigs because we would come out in the morning looking for worms or something else we couldn't find them so that's a little tip for you guys uh, if you're looking for insects you can't find them be sure to check at night as well 
And with slugs and snails, you can use this oil technique or you can do a beer trap. So the same sort of idea, you can just bury like a red solo cup deeper and then put the beer in there and that will help to attract and kill those guys. And as you can see, there's a couple snails that fell in there and died as well. Now, one other really big thing to remember too is that many of these pests have a life cycle and there's a certain temperature range and season that they really like and thrive in. And if you can get past that point, then the amount of problem you're gonna have with them goes down quite a bit. So um, sometimes do using some of these methods, it just takes a little bit of time and eventually the season breaks and then boom, they're gone. So it's another thing to keep in mind uh, when dealing with pests. Now the next natural solution I wanna talk about is diatomaceous earth. And all it is is silica powder. And when snails or slugs or earwigs uh, walk over this or even ants, they'll cut themselves or they won't, they'll notice that it's like little pieces of glass and they won't even wanna walk over it. So what you can do is just make a little barrier around your plant like this. Now, if it rains, this will get knocked away, but this is just another really simple, cheap and easy way to deal with your pests. So those are a few simple ways to deal with pests and easier ones to deal with. Something you can do for aphids or some other pests, some more soft bodied insects. You can make a cayenne pepper uh, spray. Um, there's other types of one. If you just do any sort of uh, search natural pesticides, uh, that sort of thing is gonna come up. And it works okay, it's, a, it's somewhat effective. Another great way to deal with pests is, especially in a small garden, is just to look under each leaf and then just smash the aphids or smash the worms, take them out of there um, just by hand. And that can do um, a lot of great things as well. Lower the population, you'll reduce the damage and the plant is just gonna outgrow it. Uh, the main times that it pester a really big problem are in the seedling stage in those first two, three, four weeks when the plant is really um, establishing its roots and trying to put out a lot more leaves to get bigger. Now, if you want to pull out more of the bigger guns, then these are two really good books I'd recommend. This is a bit more advanced because you're actually going to be making your own natural pesticides. And I actually had the honor of getting to meet Young Sung Cho a couple times, once in America and once in Korea. I'm actually working on the video that I made with him right now, a huge interview and a little bit of a farm tour at his place. And I'll put the link to the interview I have out right now with him. This is a way you can make your own nutrients, your own pesticides. So I'll put a link to the description of these two books and all the other things that I've been talking about in this video in the description below. The other couple things I'll mention is your organic pesticides, which would be like a spinosad or BT, Bacteria thurungus, or however you say it. And these are two examples of lab-created bacteria that they've discovered take out the larva stage of insects. So it's something that you would spray on your plants, knocks out the young of the pests, and interrupts the, um, and interrupts the life cycle of the pest insect. And these are pretty darn effective. There's a, a brand name called Dead Bug, that's Spinosad, I believe, and um, BT is used heavily in uh, organic farming and even in non-organic farming, it's a very popular one. So those are, those are some things that you can use, but I never use them on my urban farm. And the reason was is that these bacteria do interact with human gut biology. They do interact with soil biology. And any type of pesticides that you use, even some of the Jadam ones, you just have to know that you are interrupting the pest-prey relationship. And if you drop a nuke in there, you also are going to take out some of the good guys, the good predators that are going to take out the bad guys. And if you're talking about bacteria and most insects, the usually the bad guy insects will populate much more quickly. So if you take them all out with a bomb, it's just like if you take an antibiotic, guess what grows back? The candida, the bad bacteria, um, you end up establish, establishing an imbalance in gut bacteria. And that's kind of like a similar thing to soil biology and, and pests and any, you know, all patterns of nature and creation. Um, are the same and you'll start to notice patterns the more and more you study biology and nature. So just know that when you do use a pesticide, you are interrupting that. 
Um, and that's why I really try to avoid it as much as possible. Many of the pesticides um, that Yongsong Cho talks about using though, do not harm uh, the, good, the good insects or only a minimal of, uh, amount of them. Whereas some of these organic pesticides, they hurt everything. So just do your, do your research. You know, if you're gonna lose everything, then you, know, you might wanna look into spraying something. Um, if you've got everything under control though, and you can use some of these other methods um, that are less invasive, I highly recommend just doing that. That's really why it all comes back to mimicking nature, trying to introduce as many predator insects into your environment as possible, the biodiversity of plants, all of these different things are going to achieve balance over time and every single year things will get better and better as your soil improves the biology improves the micropods the earthworms the um, the little bit bigger insects the more of those that are available the more of the predators will come in and then it just keeps building on itself the bigger and bigger insects come in more balance is achieved over time and i for me, that's the most important concept to take away from this.